Welcome to another great episode of the Homegrown Hunter TV. I've got some great friends with me, Steve Wozlick. He's our operations manager for Rackstacker and Tyrell Guyweiler. He's gonna be handling a lot of the driving and the camera footage today. We are on the most, most southern inhabited location in Canada. That's one tip. Second tip is we're pheasant hunting. Can you guess where we're at? Stay tuned, it's gonna be a great show. We'll be able to share some information on the history of this island that we're hunting. Yeah. Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Nice shot. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Kent Cartridge Canada, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, and these other fine sponsors. Today we're going to be shooting Ken Cartridge's Ultimate Fast Lead, number six in the two and three quarter inch 12 gauge shell, doing our best to knock them out of the sky. Get him, Toby. Go get him. Lead shoots so much different here. Right here, right here. Stay! Can you believe that? Right here. Right there. Oh, I almost shell it. Go, go, go! There's still Are you more. kidding me? Still more. <laughs> Ten yards in front of me, fifteen birds jump, and I don't have a shell in. <clears throat> Brutal. Nice shooting. There we go. I think I'm going further. Right there. And there. There it is. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I think he's bringing it in. Good boy, in. here. Fetch, fetch him here. Good boy. Good boy. Fetch him here, Toby. <laughs> yep. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Toby. Come on. Good boy, Toby. That was going right for me. That's so much fun. Nice. 
Good shot, Wazzy. Good shot right there, the bird dripping shot. Closed captioning has been brought to you by the original portable winch. Compact, lightweight, and can be carried anywhere. Step. Nice shot. You're welcome. I did better at this. It's a lot different than shooting ducks, man. You're literally with the lead shot. You know, well, you're obviously shooting steel with waterfowl. I was always leaving them too far. With the lead, I find you just hold right on her beak and let her bite. Good boy. Nice cock set. Boy, so when you're telling about a juvenile bird, well, their tails are like that, fully mature. And they're also a little thinner, so. He's likely born in the springtime, but beautiful bird in way. You don't have a pocket, buddy. No. That means I gotta carry it. Yeah. Come on. Good boy. Yeah. Year and a half old. Working hard, man. Well, I think that'll be fun to start hitting a couple fence lines, watching the birds fly out of the ditches. Well, as long as it's not too close to the road and you shoot towards the field, you can even get back on them if the dog uh, the best. The dog lose him. Right yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. 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 Right on the edge of the field. All right, All right. you got it. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't see it either. Come on, come on. Oh, it's a pump of shit. Yeah, oh. where are you looking? There's <laughs> <laughs> my pump wire. Yeah. That's hilarious. You were so sure. I was like, well, then he can't be looking at that. <laughs> and I, I was looking past up right there. You don't see this present? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what a, I was looking at. That is. Oh, I did it again. Here, here. <laughs> Around. You bet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about trees and leaves. <laughs> oh, he got it, too. That come right out of the grass, Steve? No, wait. Yeah, it's in the grass. Clear the field. Oh, that's good. That a girl is though. Nope. Off. Off. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, distributed in Canada by Rackstacker. For over 10 years now, I've relied on Kent cartridge to be used for all my shotgun hunts. On this particular hunt with my buddies, we actually chose to be shooting the fast lead by Kent that shoots 1,475 feet per second out of your barrel. It comes in a number five and a number six. They have it in a 12 or a 20 gauge, depending on your preference. 
Now, if you're in an area that uh, does not allow lead and you have to use a non-toxic load, I'd suggest looking into the bismuth load. For a price point, you might be able to look into the steel shot ones that they have for outplaying game birds as well. Now, the nice thing is with the lead is the fact that it, they use a proprietary process and it makes it your consistent patterning for better shooting. And this is the one you're gonna be looking for. Visit your local dealer and ask for the ultimate fast lead by Kent Cartridge. It flew tail down. Good job, guys. With the bird in your hand, too. <laughs> While hunting one of the fields, I ended up running into a farmer that was combining some of his crop. I'm excited to introduce you to him. Stick around. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment, brought to you by Rackstack. When you go to hunt Peely Island, you need to be respectful of the landowner. You'll see lots of farmers running around to try and get their crop off. However, it's against the rules to be hunting in the bean field. You can certainly walk the fence lines, but you cannot hunt the grain. While I was skirting one of the fields, I ran into a farmer that was combining his beans. He gave me a big wave and invited me into the combine for a little chat. Sick. Oh, oh yeah, that's really Okay. You just touched the board and I'm not the GPS. Well, I have the lines programmed them from last year already. Sometimes I have to adjust just by a few inches, like it changes a little bit from year to year. Yeah, so I just punch in the field number and everything comes up and it gives you all the stats like uh, this, is, this is the yield, uh, the average yield for the field right now, the average moisture, 14.8, uh, 14, 20 acres that I've done so far. And, uh, oh, your total harvest was like for the field, yeah. yeah. Well, for 40 years I was in charge of grape production for the winery here. Okay. Just the last three years I took over the cash crop operation. It takes a bit of an act to get that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> After getting to know Wolfgang a little bit, he invited me over to his place in the morning for a coffee to discuss some of the details of the island. This here and this, this and this, this is all vineyards, 700 acres of it. So the vineyards are all through the middle of the island? Yeah. Where were we cutting yesterday? Yesterday was right down here at 163. Here's Dixmore, the old marina and we're back in here. There's a little bit of a history behind it, but the Vin Villa, that was, you were mentioning yesterday was in the late 1800s? 1868. The Vin Villa was completed in 1868. They started growing grapes on the island in the mid 1860s. There's a couple of gentlemen that started growing grapes here and uh, in the late 1800s there was about five wineries on, on Pili. And then uh, the biggest one was uh, Vin Villa winery and uh, the ruins are still there. Yeah, I've seen that when we were traveling around. I've seen that little, it's almost like a replica. Oh, the re yeah, right across from my house, the little replica. That's what it used to look like. And, uh, Sorry, how many acres did you see the island was? The uh, total area of the island is 10,000 acres. It's about uh, 8 by 5 kilometers, 8 kilometers long, 5 kilometers wide, so that's uh, 40 square kilometers which is 4,000 hectares or 10,000 acres. Okay. And, you see and uh, about, uh, well, at least, at least one third is, is under some kind of nature protection, like uh, between, the, between the two provincial parks, like a uh, lighthouse point at the north end or a fish point at the south end. And then like, the lighthouse is way out there, that's Lake Henry, that's like a swamp. It used to be a farm up until, uh, uh, was it 1973, was the last major flood on the island. All this center part here is, is below the water level of Lake Erie. That, that's why it's uh, like <clears throat> around the island, it's diked up. Yep. And, and then you have a network of uh, drainage canals 
and uh, pumps. Your pumpers? Pump, pump, yeah, there's a west pump, north pump, just uh, just west of where you guys stay in, the north pump house and then the south pump. There's a lot of great history to see on Peely Island. To get here, you can take the ferry or fly in from Windsor Airport to the private airport on the island as well. That might be a quicker route for you. When you take the trip, be sure to bring the family and tour the well-known Peely Island Winery. It's a fantastic place to take the kids, certainly get yourself a gift for the family, and enjoy some beautiful sunshine in October. End of day one. The dogs did a fantastic job. They're very tired. It's about 4.30 and the hunt ends at 5. It's kind of the island rules here, so we're going to head back, start getting supper ready, and I have a couple beverages. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after the commercial and we'll show you some more hunting. We're on to the second day of the hunt here at Peely Island for our pheasants. Now not far from the house where we were staying, there was a patch of bush that ran north and south. We were gonna release the dogs and see if we could bump a couple out that might have rested overnight. There's one. There's another one. You guys got him. Good job. If you're wondering what we're up to throughout the year, be sure to check us out on social media for Facebook and Instagram, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> I think that was three birds in the first five minutes. Not a bad start. Must be the strudels kicking in. <laughs> Whole beans are off, baby. Yep, I see him. He's getting it. Good girl, Lizzo. One of the cocks that we've seen this morning. Beautiful bird. Don't care. Don't care. Oh. This is why you send the dogs into flush these things. It gets real dirty in here. Yeah, man. Beauty. I'm like, I, look, I looked over, I'm like, oh, frick, they're all buried in the weeds. <laughs> you guys won't even see that. In order to hunt Peely Island, you need to book your hunts for the season before April 1st. So give them a call or drop them an email today. There's three things for certain that you're going to get out of this pheasant hunt. One, you're going to get some birds. Two, you're going to get your exercise. And three, you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. You're walking a lot of fields, a lot of fence lines, and walking through tall grass and successional brush that will put you in shape in a hurry. Push the over. bush right through. It's not. It's not that bad. It's not easy, but it ain't. So do we start here, work around, and come? We're across? actually going to go up on his yard and walk right in where it's clear. That, it's just like we what we hunted this morning. We jumped those two birds right into the grass. Yeah. And that's what's in there? No, it's thicker. Than that. A little thicker than that. Yeah. Cool. All right. You heard right. We're going to be going right through this family's backyard, and most landowners are totally cool with it. Thank you very much, folks. Well, it's a little different when you're walking through someone's backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me. How you doing? Just five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't shoot my chickens. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 so nice, eh? Not to have to ask permission. Yeah. 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 Come on, Toby. That's, look at the colors on its back. Did you put that one over here, Matt? You don't mind? Look at the difference in color. As soon as I see them like that, it's super cool. Nice. Big difference in color. Wow. Nice. Both cock birds. Nice birds. Yeah. That's, that's cool gray, man. Congrats. Thank you. My Thank first you. double, eh? Hey, you know what? I told you I wasn't backing out anymore. So. <laughs> nice shot. 
all right under your arm. They're just a, these are just a, one, um, one of the types of pheasants that you can get here on Peely. It's a little different in coloration. I'm sure anybody who's pheasant hunting, hunted, has seen these. Um, I'm not exactly sure, are they, aren't they Asian? Szechuan. Szechuan, there you go. Should have talked to Matt. And that, this is one of the, one of the hens, I believe, right here. Hopefully we'll be able to find you a male, because the males are really black. Oh yeah? Yeah, they're really like, like a dark, dark black. It's another black! That was communal, I think. Yeah. Nothing like a couple days with the boys, a couple birds, good meals, good friends. Yeah, the I wonder cover, where my steps are at. The cub's probably a lot. <laughs> 4,000. We must have a few by now. I'm at 16.6. No kidding. Really? This is under the health thing or something, right? I'm I've done 12.2k so far today. Well, that's because you spent all morning driving around the truck. Yeah. Well, folks, it pretty well wraps up our hunt here. We've gotten 42 of 50 birds here at Peely Island. I highly suggest checking them out online, getting yourself booked into the next hunt. I want to say a big thanks to our guides and the dogs for their help. Make sure you've got some Kent Fast Lead in your pocket when you come out. And thanks for joining us for Homegrown Hunter TV. Until next time. That's a wrap for out. <laughs> Ready to rock or what? Ready to rock. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.